everybody to uh, the FPGA seminar, and so this is the first one of 2011. Happy New Year, everyone. So we have uh, two papers today, and I believe this is a paper. FPGA. Yep. So we'll let Andrew uh, introduce what he's working on. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah. So as Paul said, my name is Andrew Canis, and I'm going to be presenting a short paper we got accepted at FPGA this year, and it's called Leg Up. High-level synthesis for FPGA-based processor accelerator systems. So there's a number of people involved in this project. There's myself, uh, John Sock, and Mark, who are both master's students. We had two summer undergrad students who were helping us out, Victor and Ahmed. Our supervisors are Jason Anderson and Stephen Brown. And we also had some advice from Tom, who works at Altera. So let's just get into some motivation for uh, what this topic is about. So hardware design can offer some compelling advantages over software, especially if you have a parallel algorithm, you can get improved speed, improved energy efficiency. But the main problem is hardware design is pretty difficult. There's not a whole lot of people who know how to do it well. So the goal here is we need a better FPGA CAD flow that makes it easier for people coming from a software background to do hardware design. We'd like to make it a more of an incremental methodology. So the top level vision is the engineer will start with a C implementation of his algorithm. He'll push it through a standard C compiler targeting a soft MIPS processor, which is on the FPGA. And inside this MIPS processor is a profiler, hardware profiler, which will let the user run his code and determine what's taking up the most cycles, uh, what's taking up the most power, any cache misses. Sort of profiling information that lets him decide, okay, this function would be a good candidate to move into hardware. Oh, okay. So um, these program segments you push into what's called a high-level synthesis tool, which takes a high-level language like C and can produce synthesizable Verilog as output. And when you have the synthesizable Verilog, you can now put that into the chorus and compile what we call hardware accelerators, which are on the FPGA. And you get this, code, this sort of co-design system where some of your code's running on the soft processor, and then automatically the control passes into the FPGA to this hardware accelerator, when the accelerator is done, the control passes back. And this should all be transparent to the user. And ideally in the future, we'd also like this section to be automatic as well. You should automatically see, okay, this function looks like a good candidate and move it into hardware. Right now, this is a manual process. You have to decide which parts of your program you want to move to hardware. And the nice thing also is the C compiler and this high-level synthesis framework is part of the same code base. We'll talk about that later. And these are just the people involved in the different parts of this project. So the key features that we're offering with LegUp is a high-level synthesis framework that can take in C and produce synthesizable Verilog. We're also going to provide some C benchmarks. So these are C code benchmarks that are sort of typical of the kind of code that you'd want to move into hardware where you could see some sort of advantage. Uh, we have a MIPS processor, a MIPS soft core, and this is from the University of Cambridge. It's called Tiger MIPS. And we also have a hardware profiler which will let you determine how your program's running. And a very, another very important part of this flow is these automated tests, which run uh, functional simulations and model sim timing simulations to verify that your hardware actually works as you expect it to. And we'd like this all to be open source, freely downloadable, in the same way that VPR is for place and route or ABC is for synthesis. So the overall system architecture looks like this. As I mentioned, you have this MIPS soft processor on the FPGA. We've been targeting Cyclone 2, so Altera FPGAs. So that's connected to an Avalon bus. And you have a number of hardware accelerators which represent these hardened program segments. And they communicate to the processor through the Avalon bus. So what happens is sometimes you'll have global variables which need to be shared between the processor and these accelerators. So for that, you need a, a shared memory controller which either accesses on-chip cache memory or uh, off-chip SRAM. And I should also mention the hardware accelerators themselves have a lot of block RAMs for the local memory that's used by the hardware accelerator. So the high-level synthesis framework itself is built on an open source compiler infrastructure called LLVM. And this is actively maintained by Apple. Um, it's, it has a vibrant developer community. I was just at the dev meeting last month, over 200 people. It's a great piece, great infrastructure, well designed. And we want to support quite a large subset of C. So we want to support when we move to hardware. So we want to support moving functions to hardware, arrays, structs, pointers, globals. Some of the parts of C which we don't plan to support anytime soon are recursion. So it doesn't really make sense to map a recursive algorithm into hardware. 
Same with dynamic memory. Uh, and floating point operations we just haven't implemented yet, but you could implement it in the future. So ideally this high level synthesis framework should be structured similar to LLVM, which is structured as a series of compiler passes, so optimization passes. So high level synthesis is generally broken down into few a few different stages of operation. So you have some user constraints, so time constraints, area constraints, what type of FPGA you're using. And then you have an allocation stage which maps out roughly how your circuit architecture is going to look. You have a scheduling pass which determines for each operation which state, which cycle do I actually want to perform that operation, build up a finite state machine. You have a binding pass which shares any resources and you have a pass that actually generates the RTL fair log. So ideally this should be flexible so you can swap in and out the binding pass or the scheduling pass. Um, we've had some feedback from Tom that this, the code isn't quite clean and modular yet, so I'll st I'm still working on this, it's a work in progress. Um, so far what we've built up is a simple scheduler, so it's called as soon as possible. So each operation is scheduled in the state right after all its dependents are all of its dependent operations are available. And our scheduler also supports operator chaining. So for instance, if you have um, a clock period that has some space to spare, you could have a few dependent adds within the same cycle. And we also, need a, we also support multi-cycle operations, which you need for, let's say, a divider. You can't have a divider happening in one cycle. You need to pipeline that over many cycles. Uh, in terms of resource sharing, our binding algorithm is a heuristic called um, weighted by car type matching. And generally, in FPGAs, uh, muxes are expensive, so you generally don't want to share an adder using a mux, so roughly the same area. But we do share the bigger units like dividers, multipliers. And we haven't focused at all on register sharing because FPGAs are pretty register rich. In terms of the C benchmarks that we provide, most of these are from a paper that was published September 09, and they're called the CH Stone Benchmark Suite. And I've listed the sort of applications that we have here. Uh, they're sort of typical of the high level synthesis domain. So we have some software emulated 64 bit double precision operations, some encryption applications, JPEG decoder. We also added dry stone because it's just a typical CPU benchmark. And the great thing about these benchmarks is they have a golden input and output test vectors. So one of the most important things in high-level synthesis is you have this C code, you've mapped it to hardware. You want to verify that the hardware matches the software. So this is a crucial thing to have. It's almost like a built-in self-test. And as far as I know, no other academic tools could actually support the CH Stone benchmark suite because they use quite a lot of C syntax and, and C semantics. That, the previous academic tools didn't support. So now to get into some experimental results. Uh, there were five data points that we looked at. So first we took the benchmarks and compiled them purely into software to run on the soft MIP score. Next we have two hybrid points. So the first hybrid we took the second most compute intensive function and all of its descendants and we mapped that into hardware. We also took the most compute intensive function and all its descendants and we mapped that to hardware. And then we have a point where, first of all, we used leg up and we took the C program, pushed it entirely into hardware. And we did the same thing for Excite, which is a commercial high level synthesis tool. And the resulting graph looks like this. So the five points I just mentioned are shown on the horizontal axis here. So on the far left, we start with a pure software implementation of the benchmarks. And the execution time is shown by this dark line right here. So as you can see, as you push more and more of your program into hardware, the geomean execution time decreases for the benchmarks. The blue bar graph in the background shows the number of LEs required for each one of these data points. So when, you, when you're putting everything into software, all you need is the MIPS core. Is that serious? Watch the core. Sorry. <laughs> when you put everything into the MIPS core, all you need is just that soft MIPS core. As you push more and more of the program into hardware, your area needs to increase because now you have these hardened segments of the program. But then when you go from these hybrid solutions to a pure hardware implementation, you no longer need the MIPS core. So the area, that's why the area drops in this case. And the uh, execution time for the pure hardware solution is about eight times faster than pure software. On average, like geo mean average over the benchmarks. And another interesting graph to look at is the energy consumption consumed by the benchmarks. And we got this by just doing a full timing post-routed simulation and running it through Cordis power analysis. 
And as you can see, as you go from software to a full hardware, your energy drops dramatically. In the extreme case where you're, where you're in pure hardware, you get about 18x less energy than a software implementation. So the energy results are pretty compelling. So one of the questions you'd like to ask is how does our high-level synthesis tool compare to a commercial tool? So the only commercial tool we could get our hands on was a tool called Excite. Uh, it can't compile dry stone, so we just ignored that benchmark, but it, can, it supports the whole CH7 benchmark suite. And what we found was, so we took the C programs, compiled them entirely into hardware, and our circuit runtime was about 20% faster than Excite, but our logic elements were about 20% higher. So if you look at sort of an area delay product metric, we were roughly on par with Excite. So what does this tell us? I mean, it tells us we're, you know, not in the same general bar ballpark as a commercial tool, so it's a somewhat decent baseline to start off with. So we, we will make improvements from here. So just to dig into those numbers a little bit more. So I've shown here the number of cycles it took LegUp to complete the benchmarks, each one of the 12 benchmarks, and the number of cycles it took Excite to complete each one of the benchmarks. And what you can see is that generally uh, LegUp took a lot more cycles to complete each benchmark. In the extreme example, for DF Add, we took six times the number of cycles to complete that particular benchmark. But when you look at the Fmax results, our Fmax is generally higher than Excite, which means we pipelined our units a lot deeper. We didn't try to pack as much into a single cycle. So like for that same example of six times the number of cycles, our Fmax was five times higher. So when you take cycles and multiply it by one over the Fmax, you get the runtime for each benchmark. And that's shown right here, so we ended up, uh, you know, 20% faster than Excite overall. And that's also shown graphically, so this is the ratio of leg up, run leg up circuit runtime over Excite runtime. If we're left of this black line, we're faster. If we're right, we're slower. So there's a couple outliers here. For instance, AES, we're about five times faster, uh, but motion, we're two times slower. This probably has to do with the pipelining we did versus Excite. Another very useful comparison to make is comparing a pure hardware implementation to a pure software implementation to see sort of how much room's on the table for improvement. And when we compare these two, we see that a pure hardware implementation using LegUp gets about an 8x better a circuit runtime than a pure software implementation. And that costs us, so if we compare the MIPS core to these hardware solutions, we're about 30% more LEs and roughly the same multipliers less memory bits because we don't need a huge cache anymore. So we get, some, we get a lot better runtime by moving completely to hardware. And if we break that down into each benchmark, uh, we can see for a couple, especially the 64-bit emulated instructions, uh, sorry, benchmarks, uh, you can get quite a big speed up. So let's say for double precision sign, we get a 35x speed up. So there are some cases where you get a huge speed up, just depends on the benchmark you're looking at. So just ongoing work in this project. Uh, we're looking into the overall system architecture, so the memory hierarchy. We're looking into maybe having multiple clock domains for each hardware accelerator. Uh, there's lots more work to do in the high-level synthesis portion. I really need to implement modulo scheduling for loop pipelining. I don't have any loop pipelining right now. Uh, I really need to refactor the code before this paper gets published based on the feedback I've got. And it would also be nice to um, do some more hardware profiling and make it so it's more automatic, so portions of your program automatically move to hardware. And yeah, that's everything. Okay. Thanks.